The press release reads, the 2019 football season marks the 50th anniversary of the Longhorns' 1969 National Championship winning season. Led by legendary head coach Daryl Royal, the Longhorns secured the program's second National Championship trophy, which was capped off in the regular season finale in what will always be labeled the game of the century between Texas and Arkansas. The Longhorns' epic defeat of the Razorbacks led to them being crowned national champions, marking the second title in six seasons. In honor of the historic 1969 Texas football team, the Longhorns were aware throwback uniform this Saturday when they play host to Kansas at Royal Memorial Stadium. And as a nod to the program's 69 national championship team, Texas will wear special throwback uniforms in its October 19th matchup versus Kansas. So this weekend we're going to be celebrating uh, the 1969 national championship team, a historic team here for many, many reasons. I'm not going to do it uh, injustice. I'm going to let Longhorn Network get a beautiful video about this so you guys understand who we're playing for this weekend. Well, let's properly honor Texas here now. Let's talk about that time Kansas beat Texas in football. Or as I will tell my step-grandchildren, that time Texas lost to Kansas in football. Prior to that 24-21 overtime loss by that bastion of college football blue bloods, that is Wooderson's Texas Longhorns, UT hadn't lost to KU since 1938. For perspective, the Cal Golden Bears beat Alabama in the Rose Bowl in 1938. Superman first appeared in Action Comics number 1 in 1938. Kurt Flood was born in 1938. Tom Crean died in 1938. Not that Tom Crean. The other Tom Crean. But put another way, Texas hadn't lost to Kansas since the Great Depression. That team was so bad, Shane Bouchelle went from quarterback in the Longhorns to leading the SMU Mustangs to their first 6-0 start since 86 and 82 is the first time they were ranked inside the AP in two decades. Another SMU connection. According to ESPN, October of that year, the shine of noted MIMSA member and strip club enthusiast Tom Herman had dulled with losses to Navy and SMU and near losses to Tulsa and UCF as the head coach of Houston. The SMU loss was supposedly extremely troubling to UT's boosters because it was perceived to be a lesser school than the state. <laughs> KU fans were so unprepared for the upset that they only had four dudes try to climb the goalpost and each one of them did lack the upper body strength to do it. <laughs> That's true. Before the win against Texas, KU hadn't won a single Big 12 game in two years. Before that game, UT head coach Charlie Strong, Bad Strong, had been relieved or had relieved his defensive coordinator of his duties and took over. So this was Strong, Bad's fault and Trogdor, the Berminator. If you are a Texas fan and you read the box score following the day your program hit rock bottom, you would probably rightfully wonder, how did this happen? As SB Nation's Alex Kirshner pointed out, Texas had more yards than Kansas, both per play and in total. Even though they threw three interceptions, the Horns scored 14 points off turnovers to Kansas's 10. They had field position advantage all day, starting their average drive their own 35-yard line. They had a slight time of possession edge and a 21-10 fourth quarter lead. With the loss to Kansas, 24 of 25 teams in the preseason AP Top 25 that year won at least eight games. Except the Longhorns, who finished 5-7 and seven with a loss to Kansas. Over the next three years, the Atlanta Falcons blew a 25-point lead to the Super Bowl in the Super Bowl. Golden State blew a 3-1 lead in the NBA Finals and lost to Cleveland. And the Indians blew a 3-1 lead in the World Series against the Cubs. Texas lost to Kansas. When Texas traveled to Baylor the next year, the Bears student section chanted, yes, my God, I forgot about this. They chanted Rock Chalk Jayhawk KU at Texas bench. 
and other teams who have lost to Kansas State back to 2011 include some pretty awful football programs and half a dozen who don't even play in Texas' division. Here they are in all their glory. McNeese State, Northern Illinois by three. South Dakota State, South Dakota, Louisiana Tech by three. Four and eight, West Virginia, Southeastern Missouri State twice. Central Michigan, two and 10, Iowa State, Rhode Island, Southeast Missouri, one and 11, Rutgers, seven and six, TCU, Indiana State, Boston College, and the four time national champion and most money program, college football, Texas. And it only gets worse for Texas as the defense is on the verge of being. Well, the worst in history in 2019. The Sooners' defense had sacked Sam Ellinger nine times last Saturday. That is the same number of sacks that Indominus Sue and the vaunted Nebraska defense recorded in 2009, the Big 12 championship game. What's worse is Ellinger actually lost more yards due to sacks, 53, than Colt McCoy, 52, in that game. Halfway through the season, Texas is allowing 453.3 yards per game. That's on pace to become the worst and in school history, breaking mark set in 2015 of 452.6 and 2016 of 448.2. And following the shellacking, Herman took, uh, <laughs> took, <laughs> Herman took, Herman took, <laughs> Herman took questions and actually wanted to state the obvious while also reading an injury list that sounded more like the walking wounded than an injury list. We got to hear that now. The sun came up, which is always a good thing uh, for everybody in this room included. Um, so uh, our guys were eager to get back to work yesterday. Uh, good energy at practice yesterday. Uh, obviously, there, there's a lot of things that um, uh, we can learn from that game and, and need to improve on. And um, got a lot of guys uh, dedicated and, and committed to doing that. And um, you know, our biggest goal, uh, we, we have completely turned the page uh, as a team and um, our sole focus, as it should be, um, is to do everything within our power to, to beat Kansas. Um, injury update, Chris Brown, uh, his forearm fracture is going to need surgery, uh, so he will be out um, about six weeks. Colin Johnson uh, is continuing uh, to be evaluated, uh, has not been diagnosed with a concussion. He will lift today um, and see how that goes. Uh, Jeffrey McCulloch uh, did dislocate his shoulder. Uh, he will be out for the Kansas game uh, probably a couple weeks. I don't believe it to be uh, season ending. Uh, Juwan Mitchell did sp uh, sprain his elbow. Um, Pretty significant sprain, got, a, got an MRI on that. Um, as of now, though, we don't think that that will um, limit him uh, too severely, you know, as, as the week progresses. Questions? No, Tom. I think we're done here. Deuces. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner shit. Don't <laughs>